Alright, today we're going to take you on a little bit of a virtual tour of uh, JJ Hat Center's uh, latest catalog, their website, and uh, I'm going to tell you, um, you know, through my 25 years of working there, um, my opinion on uh, some of these models. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what I can. And uh, I'll be brutally honest, uh, as I always am. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to play a little guitar to just sort of, you know, cool out a little bit, relax. And then um, we'll get right into the new arrival section. So you could even, you know, flip along with me if you have your phone nearby or something. <laughs>
All right. Let's start off. Let's talk with the talk about the new arrival section here. Um, page one. Alrighty. The Mesa is a flat brim hat, which is gorgeous. It's like a dream hat. Flat brim, amazing hat. The only thing is, um, it's it's pretty expensive. You know? uh, most of them are 400 I think there might be some color on sale for 200 now. Wow. Uh, that I did not know. Let's take a look. Okay, burgundy, we only have six and seven eighths. That's half price. That's okay. So they're 400. That's the only problem. Um, but if you're a six and seven eighths, you can get that burgundy for half price. This hat is all beaver. It's, you know, it's pure beaver. It's a hundred X, you know, really nice, nice quality beaver, a custom made hat with a flat brim, totally custom. Um, it's actually not a bad price for a pure beaver hat, you know, made in Spain, and, and it's just gorgeous. It's got a nice stiff, flat brim, teardrop. It's very youthful, fashionable. The Alberta is a two and three quarter inch brim hat. It's exactly like the Ontario, um, but that's the beaver version of that. So the Ontario is the hat that I've been kind of drooling about this year I've really wanted to get one of those funky colors but the beaver comes in uh, you know like a whiskey a gray um, whiskey gray and navy and it looks like it's selling um, it's a gorgeous hat it doesn't appear like a huge brim it seems like a temple you know like what I'm wearing kind of like a two and a half but it is two and three quarters Great felt, soft felt, even the rabbit version, the Ontario, is like as good as you'd want. You know, it's really nice. The Madrid, so I can imagine how amazing the Alberta must feel. I know some of the guys from the shop got some. The Madrid is one of my all-time favorite hats. I'm surprised I don't have one. It's, it's really nice. It's youthful, but, you know, also classy. Anybody could wear it. Um, if you're looking to get into a wider brim, it's a three-inch brim. Comes in colors like whiskey. Uh, the best colors to me are the whiskey and this color called plum. Plum is like um, it's kind of like it leans between purple and uh, charcoal gray. So if you look at that hat from far away, it kind of looks like it could be bluish gray in the sunlight or purple, but it's almost leaning towards like a charcoal gray or a slate. It's not a really bright purple. It's hard to explain. In some lights, it just looks like a dusty navy or a dusty charcoal purple, um, which is what it is. It's kind of like somewhere in between an aubergine and uh, leaning more towards charcoal. Like if you turn the saturation down on a, uh, an aubergine hat, you know, just made it less colorful. So it's, yeah, it's really nice, the plum. It sounds like it would be wacky or, you know, because, you know, I have very colorful taste, but it's not. It's actually very toned down and tasteful. Um, the whiskey and, and this one are about, like, the two most fashionable ones, I think. Um, it also comes in burgundy, which is, you know, really wild, but that might be a bit much for some people. I can see, again, some people at the shop are wearing it. Ah, looks like Lance. All right, now he, he's a cool cat. He wears his brims flat. I think he might have flattened the brim on it, which is a really nice modification. Either that or he just made it flattish. Um, he's the guy who you speak to if you have any issues with color or fashion or style. Um, ask to speak to Lance. He's like a fashion guru. The guy looks great all the time. Like He never doesn't look amazing. Um, the Madrid is, yeah, it's probably like the nicest three inch brim hat around. The calico from Stetson is really nice too. It's interesting because it has no pinches um, and it has, you know, some western touches. It's very thick, it's rugged. The Madrid is going to be a little bit more like a classier three inch brim. It's very elegant. It's exactly the same shape as my green hat that I wear, um, but with a three inch brim. So it's got that same elegant uh, crown that I like that uh, Italian shaped crown. 
the whiskey and the plum are the standouts for me, but it, you know, it also comes in burgundy, it comes in, uh, I think, navy, yep. Still comes in black and charcoal gray. We have only six and seven eighths were gone. Those are gone. Right? No. No, no, I was wrong. Okay. Yeah, so we got Madrid's. We do have them. I am wrong. Alright, um, Calico. Uh, looks like we just got some blacks in. The Calico is awesome. It's one of those Stetson felts that you can really rely on. It's thick. Excuse me, let me get a drink. <coughs> it's thick and it's like um, hardy. Similar to their premier Stratoliner felt, which is like dress felt. That's really, really thick. You know, like good quality dress felt. Thick and hardy. It comes with no pinches in the front. Okay, so it's just a center crease on top and that's it. Um, it comes with also a big feather on the side. Make sure they give you the feather. Some, some of them they drop out and stuff. Um, make sure you get it when you, you ask for yours, you know. Um, oh, by the way, can you pick me out a nice feather? Say something like that. It's a nice way of saying don't forget the feather, you know. Some of them are short. Some of them are longer, you know. You could ask for one of the nicer ones or something. Um, they're awesome. A nice fresh calico is a beautiful hat. Just a center crease and a three inch brim, bound edge, thick felt. It's rugged. That little leather lanyard, you see it there? Okay, it's like an open road western kind of a lanyard thing. That comes off if you don't like it. Um, it's like a stitch you cut right by that like little button in the center. You, you just you know, kind of pull that button out a little bit and you'll see a little see-through nylon stitches, little clear stitches. You just cut that with an X-Acto knife or a, uh, a box cutter or something like that. And then, gazang, you could take that lanyard off. If that looks too trendy or too young for you, you could get the feather out, you could get the lanyard off, and it's basically a Stetson. There is a dress band on there too. You could see it. See? Yeah. And then it becomes a regular fedora just with a three inch brim bound edge and no pinches. You could even turn that into a three inch brim open road and just cattle crease the sides, you know. Just give it some like side, you know what I mean? Side pinches. So you could turn that into your own creation or you know, whatever you want. I'd personally just leave it. I think it's great. Um, but I can understand getting rid of the lanyard, getting rid of the feather. Um, if it's just not your thing, you know. Um, I personally like that stuff. I'm kind of a funky guy, you know. But if you're not, if you're more of a, you know, a minimalist or just you don't like it, it's, I really understand that. You just pull out the feather, it just yanks out. And then as far as the lanyard thing, that too, it's easy to get out. It's a couple of clean stitches you cut. You'll see it's super easy and it doesn't affect the uh, ribbon band that's on there. They're totally separate. You could do it yourself if you're slow and you're careful not to cut the felt. It's not really difficult. Otherwise, I wouldn't, you know, recommend it. Um, something you could really easily do. All right, let's move on. Calico, I like it. I really do. Okay, the Dynafelt Rancher is from Capus Headwear. These guys are from a New York company, actually. And they make really, like, authentic, authentic hats. You know, like the classics. All the classics, like the coconut straws. They import the Italian boaters from Italy. Um, the newsboys that are real, you know, the baggy ones with the snaps in the front. The big apple. All those classic, classic things that nobody makes. Um, they make so many great Panamas for us. And, and the prices don't go up. And they have so many great features. You know, like all these cool features. And um, this is what they do. They do things that are classical and a little bit less expensive. So it's 150 for a rancher. They call it Dynafelt. It's essentially, it's wool. It's a wool felt rancher. So it's kind of a stiff rancher. Um, it's, you know, it's a stiffer hat. And um, it's 150 It's made in the USA. And um, for an American-made, you know, Western hat that's, you know, solid and classic like that, it's 
pretty nice, but you know, it's nothing like a Stetson, you know. Um, the quality is way, way different. This is for somebody who wants the same exact style as a Stetson, like exactly a Stetson Rancher. Um, it's almost indistinguishable. You could just put a Stetson pin, you know, ask us, can you give me a Stetson pin? And we put it there by the feather, nobody would know. Um, but the felt is wool, it's not fur felt, there's no rabbit there. And if it, Dynafelt is some sort of a blend, you know, it's got very little fur in it. Um, I believe it's just kind of like a wool that feels a little, you know, fur-ish, that's what Dynafelt is, or it's, it's lightweight, you know. So it's very stiff, but it's lightweight. Um, these are nice, they're made in the USA, but again, you know, if you're going to compare it to a Stetson, it's, it's a lot, lot stiffer. But it's also a little smaller. You know, the brim is smaller, it's not as wide. It's about a half inch smaller on the sides. So it's good for somebody who just doesn't want to spend as much and doesn't mind a little more rugged um, fire engine. Hey, a lot of snow out there today. And yeah, they don't mind a little bit stiffer hat. It comes in acorn, it comes in black. They're inexpensive. I believe they come small, medium, large, extra large like that. So it's like 55, 57, 59, 61. Pretty sure, let's check it out. Yes, exactly. 55, 58, 59, 61, they say. So if you're a medium, you know, you get a 58, you know. Um, you could always say, can you throw in a little padding or something? Um, I'm gonna say, if anything, go a little big on these. Uh, they might run the tiniest bit tight, only because they're stiff and they don't flex that much. Um, but, you know, I guess for the price, they're worth it, you know. There's definitely a little brick in there. Okay, the natural is, you know, self-explanatory. It's one of the more expensive hats. It's pure beaver that's undyed, un unbleached, undyed, unstiffened, nothing. It's just pure. Um, it feels amazing. It looks amazing. You'll get a million compliments on it. Um, it's super expensive though, so, you know, you'd have to wait for a sale or something. Uh, I don't know who could afford it, but, you know, I guess I have five or six guitars that cost more than this, so, yeah, I'm, that's ridiculous, of course. Um, if hats are your passion, of course you can afford it. Um, I will spend that much for half a guitar, you know, that's, yeah, I guess it does make sense, but um, the thing is with hats, um, you can keep going and going and going up in price, there, keep, there comes a point where it maxes out in quality, um, where it gets to a certain point and it just sort of maxes out, and you know, this is like around that level, um, where the felt gets so good you could just kind of, you know, after it gets a little broken in, you could roll it up, you could change the shape with your fingers, kind of like a vintage hat, and it pops back. Um, that's a really good quality piece of felt, and um, this is like that, and that's what you're paying for. I definitely like it. Um, for me, there are other choices I would go for if I was spending a big bundle uh, at JJ's. I prefer the Valencia, which is beaver and mink, with a 2 and 3 eighths inch brim. This comes just as is in clear, un uncolored beaver with a three inch brim. We used to have a uh, stingy brim too. I don't think we do anymore. Um, I like the two and three eighths inch. You know, it's closer to this kind of look. Um, and it comes with the, uh, you know, various colors, you know, like whiskey and silver belly, like a whiskey or a silver belly. Uh, Valencia is incredible, or a taupe one. Taupe Valencia, they're, they're just incredible hats. This too, um, I'm gonna just say it's not my thing, but they're very, very soft, luxurious. Um, you could see the sort of flecks of color in it, you know, it's like, it's fur, so. It's got a clear, natural color. It's pretty amazing, I guess. Very lightweight, very soft leather sweatband, super soft, and wide brim without being heavy like the Madrid. Well, I'm not saying the Madrid is heavy, but it's not like uh, stiff like the Madrid. It's more like soft, right beyond the point where it's floppy. It's really soft, but it'll still snap. Um, but that's what good felt does, you know. 
doesn't have to be overly stiffened to catch a nice snap. It can be very soft. Okay. Yeah, I like these. Wait for a sale though. Um, the Cyrus is a really interesting hat. Uh, they run small, like most of the stuff from Spain. You, you gotta buy it one size up. Um, if you're 57, buy a 58. This has a velvety finish. It's like a, what they call suede finish or suede felt. Um, it's a very short hair velour finish. So it doesn't look really fuzzy, huggy bear 70s. It just has a more expensive look. So like navy blues look deeper blue. Black looks like black velvet. Uh, whiskey looks like, you know, whiskey colored velvet. It's just like deeper colors. Um, the felt looks more expensive and more custom to some people um, when you have that kind of velvety finish. Although it's like that, it's also very thin and crispy. The edge is very, very sharp. You know, it has one of those European sharp, sharp edges, just like the Seville or the Ken. But this has more of a soft, kind of like a kitty finish or a, a very, very fine, fine, fine velvety finish. Almost like what you'd expect an expensive beaver hat to feel like, um, but it's it's more a little bit more plush than that. Um, so the Cyrus has that teardrop, a two and a quarter inch brim. So it's it's a little bit more trim than like you know my green hat or a temple or something. It's not quite as wide, but it's definitely not a short brim hat either. There's nothing short about it. It's like a, a medium brim hat, uh, and it comes in plum, which is that hot color. Plum is that crazy color, which is sort of a, it's more of a purple slate color. Here's, uh, this is the wine red, the burgundy. Wine red. Cool. And you get the idea. The plum. Looks like they had one wine red mixed in with that plum there by mistake. Okay. The plum is like not so purpley, like I said. It's laid back. It's almost like a new color. It's like this new laid back color that they made up. Picture like a color that's like, you can't tell if it's blue or purple. It's like right in between, right? You can't tell which one it is. Is it blue? Is it purple? I don't know. But then at the same time, it's also like, a little bit kind of dusty charcoal-y too, like just a little bit. But I'm going to say it, it's like right on the cusp with blue and purple. It's really nice. Um, nothing flashy about it, but I'm going to say the Cyrus with the velvety finish brings out the color more than, like, let's say, the Madrid plum, which is a little less uh, purpley looking. The Cyrus is awesome. Uh, the whiskey color, the black, I mean, the, the, so many good colors in it. Uh, remember to buy it a little bit big. The navy is a really nice color. You can see it shows off that velvety finish very well. I mean, that's definitely the feature. This is a teardrop with, without a lot of big brim, but it's not super short. It's not like the Asher. It's not as big as a Whippet. It's right in the middle of an Asher and a Whippet. Um, but it has that raw edge very soft and velvety. It doesn't feel stiff and like, you know, more super soft European. You know, you touch it, it's just like kind of squeezes in your hand. And it's got some structure, the velvet sweatband. I mean, the leather sweatband has, you know, it's a reeded leather sweatband. So around the sweatband, it's nice and, you know, structured. But up in the crown, it's real nice and soft. You know, you could kind of like shape it and stuff, you know. It's not as stiff as uh, a lot of the American hats, um, but that's why you go custom for, you know, a little bit better felt. And when you get better felt, you can afford to make them softer because you don't have to laminate them in so much stiffener. They're, they hold their shape naturally. So in other words, you can keep a hat soft because of its quality and, and the brim will still break after you roll it up and stuff, you know. I'm not saying you could roll these hats up, but just you know, it's an example. Um, hats can be softer when the quality is higher because uh, they stay in shape naturally and they don't need as much stiffener to get them to behave. Okay.
Okay, this is just a new color. The Wolla Bolero is a hat that we had for many years. It's one of those Kappas hats, like an inexpensive US-made hat. It's just like a Zorro hat. Um, it looks great on girls, guys. Let me see, here's a black picture, here we go. It's like what they wear in Spain, very Zorro-like. The feather comes out, it's just got a black, uh, you know, globrain ribbon. The chin strap also comes out easily. This is wool felt, it's made in USA wool. So, you know, it's not going to last you forever, but as long as you don't get it wet and stuff, you know, it'll be fine. Um, hats like this, when they get wet, you got to be careful of the heat. you got to let them dry flat on a table, um, away from heat, but avoid rain with any fedora-type dress hat, you know. And, uh, and definitely with wool stuff, too, unless it's light felt, uh, crushable light felt's a little better. This, I'm going to say, is, um, it's a cheaper hat. It's got like a sort of a plasticky sweatband, maybe something like plastic or paper sweatband. Um, but you know, it's very stiff. The felt is good. Um, you know, they hold their shape. You could steam them, but it's yeah, it's a little bit of like it's a novelty hat. You know, it's not something like I'll say the felt is great or anything. It's an inexpensive U.S. made wool felt and. They're one of the only people who make this shape, and most people who own this hat are very happy with it, even though the felt isn't, you know, expensive or anything. Um, it's good enough. People seem to like it. Um, it's got a totally flat top, not a cork pie, just flat, you know, flat like a top hat. And uh, the reason why it's here is because now it's starting to come in red. Um, that's a weird choice for a second color. I thought something like gray would have been, you know, really nice. We've gotten a million requests, uh, but yeah, red. So, you know, that's Capus. They're really cool brands. They make certain things that nobody else makes. Um, the Alfonso face mask. Okay, these are these are different face masks made out of different materials. Some of them are wool tweeds. Some of them are not. Um, there's all sorts of materials there. Alfonso makes our caps. It's a custom cap company. So for every single one of these, there's a matching uh, flat cap or newsboy. Um, so you, you can uh, get a mask that you can, uh, you know, wash by hand, you know, with woolite, or um, even give to the dry cleaners. I'm sure, and. Um, basically be matched up to your cap so yeah we could i think there's some kind of sale or something like that too like uh if you buy the two together they give you some kind of deal you can ask about that i don't know if they're still doing that buy three masks for fifty dollars Non-refundable, eight-inch, made in Italy. Okay. Let's move on. Okay, this is a new trooper hat. It's like one of those ear flap hats. The ears come down. Um, it comes in like a hunter plaid, I think too. Yeah, red tan plaid. Okay, these are really fashionable. You know, they're nice. Um, it's faux fur, 35% wool, buckle strap, um, good company. Um, I did sell one of these to one of my um, good customers, Jason, who really likes it. Um, it's super lightweight. It's a little more fashionable than certain troopers. And um, it also, you can sort of fold it in half and stick it in your coat pocket where you can't do that with those big bulky rabbit ones, you know. So, these are pretty nice and uh, good company. Anything by Alfonso is good. Okay, Searsucker Driver Cap. You know, again, this is nice stuff, nice stuff. JJ Windowpane Ivy. I'm familiar with this one. This is an inexpensive, uh, I believe it's an Italian import. You get these through Capus. So, it's a skinny cap. Um, like a sort of a designer, you know, narrow ivy cap made of wool. 
and they're only 85 bucks, which is pretty good for things like that. They tend to be more like around the 125 region, um, which is good about Capus. They, uh, yeah, 95% virgin wool, 5% cashmere. They come from Italy, and it's got a cotton sweatband up to double X, 64. Um, they're, they're nice stuff. You can see the Capus label in there. Um, Capus imports things too. They they'll find all this classic stuff and import it also. It's kind of like a separate thing they do besides their manufacturing. So this they import, they don't make it. They basically, you know, somebody makes it for them and they kind of distribute it. They designed it um, and uh, they make it available to us at a very cheap price. Uh, nice skinny Italian cap, virgin woolen cashmere, and a little bit less money. Oh, just got scared. The, the ice is melting off the roofs. Hamilton is awesome. Love this hat. It's probably the most authentic teardrop hat, most coolest teardrop hat you could get in that price range. Other than, let's say, the Style Master by Akubra. The Whippet from Stetson to me is a little more fun for a lot of people because it's made in USA. These are made in Czech Republic. These are sort of the same idea, but they're a little more elegantly designed. Um, it's got a wind cord. It's got this amazing band where like the cross piece of the band is like a huge square. It looks really Art Deco. Let me see if I can show it to you. Now, hold on. Yeah, like that. See? See the band? That's cool. Probably the nicest band in all the hats we have. That big square. That's so cool. And the working wind cord. It comes with the even this natural feather, not the dyed feathers. It's guinea hen in the middle, pheasant on the outside. And the little shaft of the feather, the little stick part, is wrapped in wire. They wrap it in wire so it doesn't break and it's easy to stick in those little slots. They think of everything. Um, they're really nice. The shape of their teardrop is a little bit more sort of sculpted and sensual than a whippet. Less blocky, where the whippet looks maybe a little bit more authentic because it's very square and blocky. This has a very sort of a woman-like kind of curvy... It's a little more low slung, the, the teardrop. A little more sort of like, uh, you know, nice graceful curves. It also has a, a narrow binding, which is very European and elegant, where the Whippet has a big oversized one, which is more, you know, American and uh, authentic, you know, more vintage looking. So this is, it's an alternative. It's alternative to like a Whippet or a Style Master. It's made in the Czech Republic by a company, um, Celentino. Um, who's distributed by another hat maker called Tonak. Um, and they've been around forever. They're actually older than um, Stetson. They're older than Borsellino. They're older than everybody. They're, they're not uh, 1900s. They're not 1800s. Or are they? Yeah, they're 1800s. I think 18 something. Uh, 1899, maybe. But uh, they, they do go further back. Uh, so. 18 anything is is pretty long time ago and they're still making you know hats with like the same lining with the same fonts inside if you look at the vintage ones they have the same linings and the same feathers and everything looks the same it's a great company they're slightly less than Stetson or about the same as Stetson right in the same region one advantage, they make a little bit more colors. They have a little bit more wilder, um, funky colors if you want, and um, more varieties, like different types of uh, finishes, um, different textures, things that are uh, long hair, beaver, or uh, they also have more of like a velvety velour finish. Anything that you want to order from them, you could get. They'll make uh, things yellow or orange or, you know, wild colors, raspberry they stock. It's all up to the store owners. Um, it's totally a custom brand. 
and um, we do a few things from them. Let's move on. Yeah, that comes, the Hamilton comes in a lot of colors. Uh, the whiskey to me is the standout. It'll probably be the one that's more sold out than the others. At this point in the season, I don't know if they're really ordering anymore, but uh, the other colors are really cool too. They have that real authenticity to them, you can see. There's that band again. And that pheasant and guinea hen feather. All right, let's do a couple more here. Okay, the Ken, that's a really good one. The Ken is uh, something that a lot of people have been uh, buying online uh, through my recommendation. And uh, everybody's been saying that they've been really happy with it. Uh, it's going so slow. I'm going to just bring it back to the first picture here. Try back up. So here's the Ken. Okay. The Ken Taupe is amazing. The Ken Gray. The Ken Black. Um, Ken is a two inch brim. It's a medium brim hat that's soft. It's simple. It has a, that sharp raw edge with the whip stitch. It's exactly like, a, uh, like an Italian styling with a shorter brim. Not crazy short though, it's medium. Um, you see me wearing a black hat all the time, it's almost the same as this hat. Now, it seems like a lot of people like my black hat because black is sold out already. But uh, it come in, comes in gray, comes in taupe, which is an amazing color. The, co the taupe can is a color that'll go with anything. It'll go with all your earth tone, it'll go with black. That's an amazing color. Yeah, don't laugh. It'll go with black. I'm telling you. If you think only black goes with black or only gray goes with black, only gray will go with black. That's, you know, it's a very popular um, misconception. But it's also, you know, an opinion. Everybody likes different matches and different colors and stuff. I think this is just as good on top of black suit or black overcoat or maybe blue or olive, or so it's more versatile than gray. Gray will hit all your, um, gray will be good for your grays, it'll be good for your uh, blacks, your navies, your charcoals, that whole family, you know, the blues and grays and black family. But it doesn't cross over to the earth tones like this. So this is a color, you could get taupe, that will cross over to both families. You could wear this with any earth tone, with olive, with dark brown, with, with an, even a nice purplish color, like an eggplant color. Um, you could wear this with a trench coat, like a raincoat color, British tan. You could wear it with black. It's fantastic. You could even wear brown shoes and rock your black stuff. Um, you could get a little wild like that. You could wear this with your uh, navy uh, blazer and some khaki pants. Um, you could wear it with your sweaters, with your t-shirt and the blazer, you know, like a some kind of vintage looking, you know, tweed blazer and a t-shirt and this, ah, it's crazy. You could really rock this casually, you could rock this very, very dressy, brim up, brim down. Um, and it's got that edge that everybody likes. It's elegant and the quality is really good. Just a center crease. Crown is, you know, just high enough to have some style, but not so high that people say, Mm, it's a high crown, but it's not low either, and that would just kill it and would give it that vintagey, safe look. I would say if you like a little bit more vintage look, you know, maybe the Saxon is slightly more like the the 1960s or 70s um, old man hat, you know, personified. This is more like. The same man just won the lottery and now he's shopping on Madison Avenue and uh, on the cover of GQ magazine. It's kind of like that. It's This is a more fashionable hat. It's for somebody who just doesn't want a huge brim, but they want a medium brim. Um, you say it's just like the black hat I'm always rocking. It's just like that. All right. 
the Stamford and the Tribeca. Now those are pretty conservative hats. They have that uh, velvety texture to it. Um, it's not my favorite. You know, it's it's a good size brim. It's an oversized brim. I feel these are a little bit um, conservative for me. Um, those are not my favorite either one. The Ontario is one of my favorite, favorite hats. I love it. Um, yes, it comes in all kinds of funky colors. It comes in like a rose and light blue and sapphire blue and stuff. Um, but um, the Ontario is just a nicely designed hat. It has that raw edge, a little bit bigger brim. It's actually a two and three quarter inch although I never realized it. Um, it doesn't appear to have a really wide, wide brim. It feels sort of like like my temple here. Um, kind of like, you know, a classic big brim. But um, it's a widish brim, yes. But I feel like it's just awesome. Um, that's a hat that I've been wanting for a very long time. Um, I'm hoping by the time I get back to JJ's there's some of them left. I say this hat is gorgeous in gray and black, and there's like a whiskey color, which is uh, really nice. It's a darker whiskey, um, mahogany it's called. And then you could also get these in a pure beaver version. The mahogany one is just so nice. I know some of the guys who work there wear it. Um, it's possible they're wearing the beaver version, I think, too. Yeah. Look at that hat two and three quarter inch brim in mahogany. It's not like a, I don't know what you would call that color. It's like a dark, dark rust or a sienna, something like that. Burnt sienna for you crayon fans out there, for artists. Burnt sienna, something like that. Yeah, that's definitely uh, one of my faves. I mean, that's, that's really nice. And when it's on sale, it's affordable. It's definitely affordable. The Mercer is a tight little hat. It's a cool little jazz hat. You know, it's like something you might see like the erroneous monk wearing or, you know, like it's a real deal short brim hat. Again, leave it to Capus. Capus is importing this. They're not making it. So these are actually made by Celentino, uh, Tonac. They're made in the Czech Republic by the same guys. Um, with Capus's label in there, you know, it's made for Capus, but um, they are exquisite, really, really nice. Um, it's a little bit higher crown than a Stetson, so it looks kind of cool. Um, has a nice deep oval pinch on the side, natural uh, feather, comes in yeah, a nice pheasant. I like these. I don't know what's left of them though. The Asher, again, one of my favorite hats. Um, it's a hat with a short brim that's just a quarter of an inch less than two. You know, it's not quite a two inch brim, but a little bit less than that. And it's a hat that goes real casual, but it also just looks real nice. If you're not a big guy, um, it's a hat that doesn't overpower you. It looks modern. At the same time, you know, it's a classic hat. It's just got like a 60s modern young look to it, which uh, I feel like it just doesn't look, um, it doesn't look out of place. It looks like something that um, you could sell to a young man, you know, and you could just wear it with like a cool leather blazer or whatever, you know, and you just look cool. You look like, you know, somebody from today, not somebody from the 40s. Um, great hat. And we're probably going to end with that one because today is laundry day and I'm putting it off. I've got to do laundry for the house. So I'm going to play a little guitar and then I'm going to do the laundry. Let's turn off all these effects, right? Delay, reverb. <laughs> 